the Memphis Tigers. The Liberty Bowl renovations are a go. Now, these have been rumored for quite some time, um, but it it is, I mean, they are getting some massive, massive renovations done to the Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. It is not the Liberty Bowl anymore. It is now Liberty Stadium. Uh, I've got the video pulled up here that uh, that is showing everything. Uh, and I'll, I'll read you through this. It said the game has changed and we evolved and it's showing a bunch of the students and whatnot. It says, be part of our future. And then it shows a redone Liberty Bowl Stadium. And it looks absolutely massive and epic and everything else. If you, and it, of course, they've redone Tiger Lane already. They have redone a lot of things over there in that fairgrounds area. Uh, have you been over there yet? Have you seen what all the work is? Well, yeah, I was there all day yesterday. I work okay. in Midtown. What are you talking about? I drive by it every day. Well, I, I figured as much. Uh, they they are working on this new entertainment, our sports and entertainment complex. They're going to make it a youth sports haven over there. Uh, the the news here, at the Liberty Bowl, by the way, looked out of place with all of the new stuff that is going in. Everything else was new and redone and renovated, and the Liberty Bowl Stadium, of course, was old, decrepit, you know, it had a lot of issues. Needed a lot of work. This thing says elements of the 150 to $200 million renovation with goal of completion prior to the 2025 season. It says transformation of the west side with innovative premium seating, hospitality experience within Halo space, family boxes, and student party deck. Now, the pictures look awesome. Like, this is big-time stuff. Uh, and you and I talked before we got on the air about... All of this, uh, so the Tigers put, why is this our football future? Uh, it says, optimizes position in evolving athletics landscape, commitment to sustained competitive and recruiting success, upgrades the fan experience, positive long-term economic impacts for the university and the city. Uh, to, to shorten this up, the truth of the matter is this. You said if they don't do this, they are not getting into the Big 12. Whenever right. they decide to do it again. Uh, and even if they don't get into the Big 12, you still had to do this to be able to dominate what's left of the AAC so that nobody right. can sneak up on you. If you are going There's to no maintain reason. a football powerhouse, you need to keep up with the Joneses regardless of what conference you're in. And and I think that this is the first step in doing that. Obviously, they have fixed the... Not fixed. They are working on upgrades to the football facilities. Uh, they've already redone the basketball stuff. They have redone the baseball stuff, etc. Every other athletic thing on campus has done it. This one is not on campus, and they are finally putting in the money to make it big time. Uh, Give me your thoughts here. Well, yeah, I think that that's exactly what they got to do. There's no reason if they never get into the Big 12, being Boise is a bad thing. You know, let's dominate this conference. Every we're we're football in the South. We know exactly who Boise State is. We know how exactly they good they are every year. Um, we we know the players. Uh, we follow the program because they are worth following, and everybody in the country that's a college football fan knows it. Even if you don't live in that area or care anything about Mountain West football, and and I think there's no reason Memphis can't become that. Hey, you can also get to a point, by the way. Of just going independent, like, and I know that that sounds crazy, but I think that's crazy for a team it, like Memphis. Well, I mean, if if you're in the AAC, and all of a sudden you've got these other teams that are dropping out, right? You've got the big name guys. It, it might not be the worst but the idea. The AAC is not going to fall. The AAC is not going to fall. There's always going to be a G five level, and that G five level is always going to have its hierarchy of the top and the bottom of it. And you'd rather be the top of the – I'll tell you this. I'd much rather be the top of a G5 than the bottom of a P5, okay? Call me and tell me, would you rather be a Kansas fan or a Vanderbilt fan or a Memphis fan? All right, let's have that discussion, okay? Would you rather win three games a year or two games a year? Would you rather win nine games a year? I don't care about the caliber of opponent. I don't care the guys coming in. Winning football games is fun. Being in competitive football games is fun. This is true. This is true. I was looking at it more from the aspect of if we do have a split between the haves and the have-nots, right? As we've kind of alluded to for a while, uh, Memphis wants to be one of the haves. 
like well, whatever that, that looks but like. But you don't think – hang on now. You don't think dominating the conference is going to give you the ability to make the decisions in the conference? Oh, I'm sure it so will. So once the American gets realigned and it's all settled in the wash and the guys that are out are out and the guys that are in are in, if you're the number one team in that conference year in and year out or a top two or three team in that conference year in year out, what you say and what you want goes far more weight than 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 what the, the new guys say or what the smaller guys say. All right? And so if you want to if, – if, if they break away from the NCAA, a section of college football, and you want to do that, I'm going to tell you if you're the American and you know that your cash cow is ready to leave, you kind of listen to them. You say, hey, how about we all break away? And you start lobbying folks to do it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I can get with you. So I do, I do not think this is going to be only the big boys are going to leave. I just don't. I, I just don't believe that's going to happen. I, I think the, the schools that want to, that have the uh, ability to do so, will will be able to do it. They will be afforded an opportunity um, but I think a lot of them are going to have the ability to do it. I don't think it's just your Alabamas and your Georgias and your Ohio States. It's not just yeah. going to be the biggest schools in the country. No, I it's agree. All, there's a lot of these little programs. UAB has put a shitload of money into football. UAB is going to want to compete with the best of everybody. No, I, I tend to agree with that. I tend to agree with that. We shall see. Uh, it. I mean, the, the photos look absolutely magnificent. I mean, it's it's really good stuff. So we'll see what it ends my, up looking like. My, my question is: Is what are they going to do while they're doing it? And I guess they're going to have to do this in phases because it's not like they got another facility they can go play at for a couple of years. <laughs> they can go over to Central High School, I guess. <laughs> oh Lord, surely they're not going to do that. <laughs> no, I would imagine they'll they'll do it in phases and they'll work on it in the off season. Uh, but it is a renovation; it is not just tear down and start over. So, you know, you may not have the entire stadium available at all times, but. Maybe that's okay. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.